And let's bring in now New York Assemblyman Kenny Burgos. His district includes the Bronx. Thank you so much for making the time for us. I know it's been a, a tragic day for you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's certainly been a whirlwind of a day. So uh, tell me what you're hearing from your constituents and, and what you make of the information that Tom just relayed to us, which is that all of the fire departments are short members because of COVID. Yeah, I, I've been receiving phone calls since the morning. Um, I mean, this is an incredibly, incredibly tragic, I mean, tragic, tragic uh, scenario happening here in the Bronx. Uh, so we've just been making sure these families are taken care of, making sure, you know, people are coming out of the building, our house, giving the proper resources. Uh, and as far as the firefighters, you know, it's a difficult time, right? We're still dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. We have vaccine mandates. We have uh, a lot going on in our city, um, but I'm thankful that the fire department was able to respond in three minutes. I mean, that's huge. That saved many, many lives. So I'm thankful for their heroic actions and, and for the work they've done today. And once again, you know, illustrations of the world's finest firefighters risking their lives, going in without oxygen, uh, getting injured themselves to save others. Yeah, absolutely heroic. I mean, you can't ask for a better crew of firefighters than New York City Fire Department. Uh, this could have been, this is, this is an awful tragedy, but to think of the size and the vastness of this building, the way this smoke has just kind of taken over the entire building so quickly, this could have been unfortunately even worse. Uh, so we do have to thank our firefighters for their actions today. And what can you tell us about the victims? Obviously, we know that, that nine of them were children. That is just heartbreaking. We heard in that press conference that many of them are immigrants. And you think about the irony of that crossing oceans for a better life only to meet this fate in their own home. It's horrible. I, I mean, you know, if you hear nine children dead, it's probably some of the worst news you can ever hear. Uh, and you're right. This building was um, definitely a building with many immigrants. And it's not lost on me that, unfortunately, immigrants and you know, low income citizens and black and brown New Yorkers are unfortunately typically the victims of, of things like this. Now, we know this case uh, seems to be from a space heater, but I'm gonna look forward to see what this investigation looks like because, you know, we know a lot of these buildings go into decay, a lot of, you know, disinvestment, and we don't know there could be more causes of this fire. So we're looking to see what the investigation brings. Do you know if there was heat in the building, if everything was functioning correctly this winter, or why they were using space heaters? It appears to be, um, you know, the smoke alarms are working. I haven't received reports that heat was not working, but you do hear space heaters being used, so you have to wonder, was it sufficient? Um, you know, that is unfortunately an issue we have sometimes throughout the city and in some of these buildings. Uh, so I would hope not, but again, we'll have to see this investigation and, and see what was the, the real cause of it. And I know I was listening to the press conference, so I know there were no fire escapes. The people were making their way inside the building, down the stairwells, and the firefighters saying that there were people on every single floor. What can you tell us about uh, the layout of the building and the escape routes in the building and how people were trying to get out? Well, I haven't been in this particular building myself, but if it's, you know, similar to a many, you know, large apartment buildings in the Bronx. I mean, these are vast, you know, this is an entire complex. Sometimes it is not easy. It is not quick to get out of some of these buildings. You're talking about multi-story, multi-leveled. You've got to get through. There's probably two or three different stairwells. And then you mix that in the fact of you're, you're panicking. There's smoke everywhere. I mean, it is a difficult task to get out of there. Uh, so I can only imagine, you know, what these families were going through and my heart is with them, with the victims and, and all the families who were fortunate to make it out. It is just unspeakable. We know that more than 60 people are at hospitals with life-threatening injuries. Do you expect this death toll to climb? I think so. I mean, I think this we're still very early in this. This only happened just this morning on a Sunday morning. Uh, and we're hearing reports. Things will always change. I think we'll have a lot more information by the morning. There are a lot of families in there. Uh, so I think we'll have to wait for a few more days to have the real number. But I do expect, unfortunately, the number to climb. Do you know about anything about the number of people who are in each unit? You know, we just covered that other horrible fire in Philadelphia, and there were, you know, way more people than expected living in each unit. Do we know if that's the case in this fire? We don't know for certain, but we know New York City, the Bronx included, is an expensive city. And, you know, it is not uncommon to have many individuals, sometimes multiple families, living in one apartment. In this specific apartment, I believe the report said it was a duplex. So this seems to be a sizable, maybe even pre-war apartment. Uh, so I would not be shocked to hear that we would have multiple individuals and multiple families within a lot of these units. What kind of questions will you be asking in your capacity as, as a public official? 
Yeah. So my questions are absolutely going to be, you know, first and foremost, the smoke detectors, were they all operable? Uh, you know, make sure they're up to code. Uh, again, right, talking about regulations, whether it's family size, making sure uh, whether we don't have any fire escapes here, right? So are there fire doors? What are the fire exits looking like? You know, what made this fire become such a tragedy as opposed to maybe just being something as limited to a kitchen fire? We need to know what caused it and what we can do going forward to prevent this from ever happening again in our city. And, and what about the problem of space heater fires? Because this is something in the news we see every single winter. Uh, usually it's not uh, to this extreme extent, but um, what do you think about space heaters and, and, and their relation to starting fires, especially in a, in a high density building like this? They unfortunately appear to be the cause of one and way too many fires going on, not only in the city, but throughout this country. I mean, I know I've spoken with firefighters in, in, in our borough and we've had, you know, educational um, kind of like courses going on and telling families, you know, be aware of your space heaters and, and other things you should be aware of to not have fires. But space heaters really seem to have a big issue in causing these fires. So I think we need to look at this from a consumer standpoint, whether the state or the federal government, but maybe we have to take a look at the production of these things and have a lot more safety regulation because between space heaters and the lithium ion batteries, these seem to be causing a lot of fires, uh, especially here in New York City. And, and I've been speaking to you and asking you questions in your capacity uh, as an elected official, but these are your constituents, these are your fellow New Yorkers. What has been your reaction just hearing the news and hearing how bad this actually is? I mean, this I mean, truly has to be one of the saddest days uh, in my time as a lawmaker. You know, this is a borough that has birthed me, has raised me, my family still lives here. So, I mean, I feel an immense kind of connection to this happening. I myself had a house fire. I mean, nothing to this level, but so to know what these families might be going through and the ones that lost their lives to this tragedy, I mean, it happens in an instant. And when you hear, especially again, nine children losing their lives, I mean, I can't think of a Saturday here in New York. What are your next steps as a lawmaker? So our next steps are going to be going up to the state. We're in session right now up in Albany. And obviously, this is going to be a big, big issue. So we're going to go to our committees and speak to the fire department, speak to the NYPD, speak with the building, the management, anyone and everyone that is involved in this. And again, do our best, whether it's investigations, whether it's passing new policy, new laws, regulations, to make sure we do not have this happen again in our city. And I understand uh, fellow New Yorkers are already stepping up. They're gathering belongings. They're doing everything they can, you know, just hours later to help these people who they don't even know. That really speaks to the spirit of New York. That is the beauty of this city, the beauty of this state. You know, you got 9 million people from every single country, walk of life, different languages, but we come together in times of crisis and we help out our neighbors. And that is really the most beautiful thing about this city that I love. Well, Mr. Burgos, we will leave it there. We appreciate your time. We know you're very busy and, and our thoughts are with you and, and everyone in New York and those victims especially. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.